Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment. And today I wanted to finish up talking about pigments in history that are the blues. There are some ones that I just couldn't possibly get to because I don't have editing software and my camera only lets me do like 12 minutes at a time. So we are going to finish up. And we can't finish up without talking about Han Blue. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, I would strongly <laughs> recommend you check out the one about Han Purple because Han Purple just breaks all the rules. It, it does its own thing and it is absolutely extraordinary. Han Blue does not perform by Han Purple. It does not lose <laughs> a dimension and enter a new state when cooled to absolute zero and magnets are added. So, kind of a bummer. But, you make Han Blue sort of heating through Han Purple. So, Han Blue was uh, developed and used in the ancient imperial China through the Cho and Han dynasties. And it's made primarily from malachite, silica, witherite, bunch of minerals. And when you heat them, Han purple forms the fastest. But if you allow an excess of silica to be present and a longer reaction time, you get the Han blue. So they're not chemically identical. There is differences, though they mix really well together. And when they look at um, ancient art from China and antiquities, they find that both of them have been used in pairings. So I will link everything if you want to go and look at the beautiful art because Han Blue is, is really, really gorgeous. Um, I think we should talk about Yinmin Blue. So Yinmin Blue is the latest accidental, oops, I discovered a whole new color to ever take place. And this happened in 2009. <laughs> I apologize, we have cats and they don't care that I'm recording. Um, so you will hear Yinmin Blue also referred to as Oregon Blue because it was um, discovered at Oregon State University. Now, this was created by a professor and chemist, and his name I'm going to butcher, and I apologize so much. His name is Moss Submanian, and his then student, uh, Andrew Smith. And together they mixed indium oxides, and manganese oxide, and lithium oxide, and they heated it in the oven to 1200 degrees. Now this is a very chemically stable pigment. It doesn't fade like ultramarine and Prussian do. It's not, not toxic um, like cobalt is. You can get cobalt poisoning from old cobalt pens, paints because there is a carcinogen in there. And that is very dangerous and problematic. So they have found that this pigment is really, really, really good for cooling. So sort of used as a solar reflectance and that's how it was initially sort of licensed. And in May of 2015, a Shepherd Color Company won the license to have this pigment. And <laughs> like all the companies wanted to use it and try it and they couldn't, they weren't allowed. So what Crayola did, I love you Crayola, you try so hard. They retired their dandelion yellow in 2017 and decided they were going to create their own sort of yin min Crayola crayon. But it doesn't actually contain any of the yin min pigment. So they renamed it Blutiful, um, pun intended. And so as of September 2017, that started being sold in Crayola packs. Um, Derivan, which is an Australian company, um, they also became available to use it, purchase it in 2016. Europe um, got approval to sell the pigment in 2017. The U.S. got approval to sell the pigment in 2020. So... We're, we're a little behind, but we're catching up. 
Um, so in April 2021, Golden Paint Company actually um, got approval to sell. And they've commercially licensed and sourced the pigment so from Shepherd Color Company. So you can go on and look. I know it's in limited batches. I don't think they have huge, huge supplies. Um, I've seen that Schminka, the Hoodrum Aquarell, the artist line, not the student grade, but the artist quality pigments. They have one called Yemen Blue. I'm not sure. It looks like it's back ordered from Cheap Joe's until December, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that one. Um, it looks like a very, very deep, deep, true uh, sort of ultramarine is what it looks like, which I think that's fantastic that chemists are still having happy accidents and creating beautiful blues. I say don't stop. <laughs> The best thing to happen to pigments or scientists at this point so keep doing what you're doing we love it and this wouldn't be like a fun sciencey video if we didn't just keep going and embracing the science so I'm gonna talk about another color which isn't a discovered pigment but a color scientists think they know so if I said to you, what is the color of the universe? A very specific color or colors comes to mind in your head. Well, <laughs> a couple astronomers, um, Ivan Baldry and Carl Glazebrook, got together <laughs> and decided to combine the light from 200,000 galaxies within 2 billion light years of Earth and we know that sort of, you know, young stars burn hydrogen, which is kind of bluish. And the older red giants sort of burn red. And they sort of had to figure out how we could view this because the human eye can only see, you know, certain wavelengths of light. We can't see all the wavelengths. So they tried to convert it into a color that we could see with our eyes that would look like the color they are trying to describe. Now, <laughs> so what is the color of the universe? Well, it's sort of between a pale turquoise and a medium aquamarine, which wasn't what I was thinking of <laughs> when they said color of the universe, but I just think that that's really cool. And they're now using this color to sort of age and identify when stars and formations of things are happening. So they're able to use this color knowledge to help them further their science, which is awesome. So I hope you found <laughs> this video interesting. I, I hope more colors that are safe and light fast are created and available to us in the coming years. And I will link as many different places to buy some of these things as possible. And just general articles if you want to see it with your own naked eye. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.